Hi everybody and welcome to the third in a third webinar in our series of webinars. Uh, it's a balancing act and we're going to focus on balancing the horse's diet. Now just a little bit about who we are if you have not been on one of our previous webinars and you're wondering who you're speaking to or listening to I should say. Um, that's me in the top picture. My name is Dr. Tanya Cubitt. I'm originally from Australia. I have a master's and PhD in equine nutrition. I moved over here um, from Australia in 2001 and I will be the presenter this evening. Dr. Stephen Duran, um, the founder and president of Performance Horse Nutrition. Uh, um, also master's and PhD is also is going to be answering questions and then probably the most important person in our team is uh, Rebecca Scow uh, she keeps the she keeps the wheels turning and she keeps us in line so thanks very much to Rebecca so what are we going to discuss tonight well we're going to talk about what we've looked at so far in our first two webinars just a little recap we're going to talk about what information is needed before we can ever balance a ration? People come to me and say, well, what do I feed my horse? I've got a 13 year old horse, what do I feed him? Well, there's so much more information that I need. And so before you ask somebody, what should I feed my horse? I want you to be prepared with all the information that you need so that you can get the best possible answer. And then we're going to go through a slew of different examples of rations that have been balanced using our Equibalance uh, ration balancing software. I also want to point out what can go wrong when you balance rations. And then of course, you can ask whatever questions that you have throughout or at the end. So what have we touched on so far? In the first webinar, we looked at basic digestion and we, we went through the digestive system. The equine digestive system is made up of a simple, small stomach that does not have a lot of, uh, ca cannot hold a lot of volume. Um, then we go through to the small intestine, that big, long, squiggly thing. And then the hindgut is make up, made up of the cecum, large colon, and small colon. And the hindgut is full of all kinds of bacteria whose primary role is to digest fiber. 65% of the digestive capacity is the hindgut of the horse. And as I mentioned, it is primarily dedicated to fiber digestion. So forage is the most important part of the horse's diet. We then went on to talk about the fundamentals of forage. What is forage? Well, it's the, the, the fibrous parts of plant material. The two most common forms of forages are pasture plants. Um, and then they can also be processed, cut and dried into different forms, uh, baled hay, hay cubes, hay pellets, chopped forage. Um, but we're looking at pastures, any pasture plants, legumes, grasses, those kinds of things. These all make up the forage part of the horse's diet, and these are extremely important. And we discussed that last week in Dr. Drone's webinar. So we went through the digestive system and we highlighted the importance of forage. And I just want to, oh, I always go back to this slide. I really think this is probably one of the most important things that anybody can ever show you when it comes to feeding horses is uh, that the bare minimum amount of forage that a horse should eat. Absolute bare minimum is 1% of their body weight. So if we have a thousand pound horse, that would be 10 pounds of forage per day. Now at that small an amount, they will lose weight, they will develop all kinds of stereotypical behaviors and bad manners um, and digestive issues, but they will, uh, that will keep the gut moving. If we wanna put our horse on a weight loss program, I'm gonna feed about 1.2% of that horse's body weight. So that would be 12 pounds of forage per day. Now remember, every time you minimize intake, you have to, um, in, 
more intensively manage that horse because our whole goal in feeding horses is to mimic that natural grazing behavior. But typically our horses are going to eat anywhere between one and a half to 2.5% of their body weight, so 15 to 25 pounds of forage per day. So as we go through our ration balancing examples, I've gone right down the middle there and used 2% of their body weight or 20 pounds of forage as our average normal intake. It's not uncommon though for horses to eat up to three, three and a half percent of their body weight. That would be about 30 to 35 pounds of forage per day. If they're eating primarily pasture, pasture is about 80 percent water, so they're going to consume a lot more percentage of uh, their body weight in wet pasture because these numbers are dry weight values. So we're looking at 2% of their body weight in dry fiber. So we know that forage is extremely important to the makeup of the digestive system, but we also know that there are some shortcomings of forage. And how do we know this? We know this because there are forage testing laboratories that have been testing forages for years and years, thousands and thousands of samples a year. Um, one that is available to anybody to utilize is called Equa Analytical Laboratories. The, the link is there. And to get a hay test run, it's going to run you anywhere from $18 to $100, depending on the depth of analysis that you want. Now, some of your feed companies, I know we have several clients that actually have their own fee, uh, forage labs. And so that may also come as a service as part of um, the feed that you're, you're feeding, the feed company that you're using. So always make sure that you're asking um, if that is a service that they provide, because it's really the foundation to building a diet is understanding the forage that you have available. We know through numerous collations of this data year after year, that there are trends for forages, especially out here on the East Coast, to be starting to be deficient in calcium and phosphorus. And really across the country, uh, our forages are deficient in copper, zinc, and selenium. There are very few pockets of the country, of really the world, that have enough selenium in the soil, which therefore, um, shows in the forage. And depending on the horse that you're feeding and the body condition and the uh, energy output, energy and protein may also be deficient in the forage that you're feeding. So these are some shortcomings of forage. And the reason why we feed anything other than forage is to complement or supplement what you're not getting out of forage. So that's why it's really, really important to start with your forage, understand your forage and build your diet from there. So as I mentioned, we need to complement these of whatever your available forage is or balance the diet with these deficiencies in your diet. You need to choose the correct feed concentrate um, I'm not going to use the word grain because for me, I think we get ourselves in a little bit of a, uh, a vicious cycle when we start to use the word grain when we're describing a bag of feed because we all know we have a lot of different um, bagged options that actually have no cereal grains in them, corn, oats, barley. They can be grain-free options and these are great for our, our low-carb requirements. So I like to call these concentrated feeds. They're concentrates. They're concentrated sources of nutrition and we need to pick the correct product to complement your forage and meet the needs of your horse. And I've got that highlighted because oftentimes we choose products based on what our trainer says we should feed or what the latest Olympian is feeding and what the latest you know, high profile rider is feeding. But let's be honest, there are very few Olympians and, and high profile riders out there and we're not at that level and we have a different horse with a different set of needs. So we really need to be honest about the needs of our particular horse and feed that horse, not the idea of the horse that you have, you know, that you might want. So what is the information that we need? What do we need? What do I need when you call and say, I need you to help me balance my horse's diet? 
Well, number one, I need to know what your horse's age is. Why do I need to know that? I need to know if it's a young growing horse and they have very specific requirements, primarily for protein and, and really good quality protein and um, calcium and phosphorus and copper and zinc are really important. And, the ratios are very important in this young growing horse because, again, we're building the foundation of that horse. Or are you feeding a senior horse? And when we, when I am talking about a senior horse, I'm truly asking, it, does your horse have good teeth or poor teeth? Because for me, a senior horse is a horse that has poor dentition and cannot chew long stem hay. So I then have to account for the one and a half to two percent of his body weight in the feed that we're feeding him, that's where I have to get that fiber from. So I need to know the age of your horse. I also need to know his body weight because when we set these nutritional requirements for horses, the NRC, these are all based on the horse's body weight. So the amount of crude protein for a horse doing light exercise at body weight X, there is a requirement. Um, so body weight is absolutely critical. Now there are ways that you can measure your horse's body weight. Obviously, if you have access to a scale, that's the best way to measure your horse's body weight. You can use a weight tape, like you see that lady with the chestnut horse, the lady with the pink sweater on, she's got a weight tape around that horse's girth. But we all know that if you have five people at your barn weight taping the same horse, they're all going to get five different values. And the scale weight to a weight tape um, weight is going to be off probably by about 200 to 300 pounds. So weight tapes are great, for looking at trends in weight gain or weight loss, but they're not 100% accurate for actual body, actually estimating body weight. But if there's an, if you don't have another alternative, then it's it's the lesser of all evils. Um, then there is also a simple equation that we can do. Any of us that are homeschooling mothers right now have got our math cogs turning in our brain again because we're now trying to teach our children all of these fundamentals. And so you actually put a tape measure around the horse's girth and you times that number by that number again. So girth in inches times girth in inches times the length of the horse. And the length of the horse goes from the point of the shoulder to the point of the buttock. So if I use my little drawing tool here on this fat horse, it would be from the point of the shoulder here all the way to the point of the buttock right here. Okay, and we're gonna measure right that length there. And so that is the length of the horse. And then you're gonna take that number of girth by girth by length, and you're gonna take that number and divide it by 330, and that will give you an estimate of weight in pounds. Now what weight doesn't tell me is it doesn't tell me anything about the horse's body condition. I might have a thousand pound horse, but if you tell me it's a thousand pound Shetland, it's morbidly obese, but it's, if it's a thousand pound Clydesdale, it's emaciated. So body weight doesn't tell me anything about the horse's actual body fat. So we have this body condition scoring system of one to nine, and we'll go through those pictures in a minute because I think it's really, really important. And research has shown that oftentimes we overestimate our horses um, exercise level and we underestimate our horse's body condition. Um, so I also need to know the horse's activity level. And I don't want to know whether he does dressage or whether he's an eventer. I really want to know the amount of hours of work per week that he does because you might be a weekend, you know, novice dressage rider where your horse is doing walk, trot, and a little bit of canter. Well, to me, that horse is light exercise. But dressage, you might be a Grand Prix dressage rider and you're, you know, competing heavily and that horse might be moderate to heavy exercise. So I want to know um, the activity level, the amount of hours per week that you're riding and the intensity level at which you're riding. I need all of these things in order to help build, balance and build a diet. I want to go through body condition because I think it's really, really important for the last question that I ask is what is your goal? Um, 
And if your goal is to put weight on your horse, I really want people to have a, a clear understanding of what is healthy and what is unhealthy. So if we're gonna body condition score a horse, we actually want to evaluate all of these different areas, the neck, over the withers, over the back, of the flank, over the ribs, where you would do the girth up, um, over the tail head, um, over the buttocks. We wanna take all of these areas and average them all and get a body condition score. Sorry, these pictures are a little bit blurry to keep the size of this presentation a little smaller, but this is a horse in a body condition score of one. And you can see without even touching this horse, you can see all of his ribs, you can see all of his bones. And if you were up close to this horse, you would probably say that behaviorally he would be a little depressed and he's probably got gunk coming out of his eyes and he's lethargic and even though he's emaciated he probably doesn't have a big appetite because everything's going downhill fast. So that is a body condition score of one. Body condition score of two and you can see that this horse is probably perked up a little bit in behavior and we've got a little bit more even coverage over the horse. Just like body condition scoring any animal, whether it be your cat or your dog or your cows, you really have to put your hands on the horse. I want you to palpate the horse and feel these areas. You don't want to just look because as we get into the higher numbers, it's really important to be able to feel how much fat am I going to or how much flesh am I going through to find the ribs or find the bones, for example. A three, I, you know, we're starting to get a lot more even coverage over this horse. I can still see a visual outline of the ribs and I can still palpate the hip bones, the pin bones, and we really don't have any crest. There's almost a little bit of a dip in front of the withers. Now this horse here, this is a body condition score of four, and I can still see a faint outline of the ribs. Now, if this is an elite level endurance horse or uh, a race horse, a thoroughbred and peak performance, this might be peak performing level for them. But for most of our horses and brood mares and, and pleasure horses, this is still considered thin. This horse to me here is a body condition score of five, and this horse is ideal. I palpate this horse and I don't have to push really hard to feel the ribs, but I don't visually see the ribs. I don't have to palpate anywhere in the body very much to feel the bones, but I don't visually see them. I've got even coverage over the whole animal. If we go to a six, you can see this horse has got more body fat coverage, but a five and a six are considered ideal. Body condition score of seven, now we're starting to get a little bit more fat pads. You can see this horse has got some more fat over where you would do the girth up, a little bit more fat over the back. The withers are starting to get lost there. This horse is a body condition score of eight, definitely fat. What you can't see in this photograph, this is a horse that I've seen, there are actually little creases on this horse's hindquarter where the skin is folding up because there's so much fat. I always joke and say it's um, quite uh, amusing that this horse's head is in a feed bucket. Of course, he's really fat and he's eating. And now we have a body condition score of nine and everybody would say that this horse is obese. It's got a huge crest. This horse was being used for glucose and insulin studies. You can't see where the tail head comes out because there's a big fat pad over its tail head. I don't even see withers. I don't see where the shoulder actually goes into the barrel of the horse. Your saddle would ride up the horse's neck if it wasn't for its front two legs. This horse is, is extremely fat. Um, and don't be fooled. I've been to barns where they say fat, I see signs and it says fat is the best color. Fat is really actually quite dangerous. Um, so what else, what other information do I need? So I, I wanted to know the actual body condition score of the horse, but I also need to know what are you currently feeding your horse? What hay are you feeding your horse? Um, do you have an analysis on that hay? That's always a really great thing if you do. It's not a necessity, but it's great if you have that. But do you feed alfalfa? Are you feeding Timothy? Can you give me a little visual of your hay? Is it, is it Timothy with a lot of seed head in it? So I'm gonna make the assumption it's probably a little bit more mature, maybe lower in calorie content. Um, 
what concentrate feed are you feeding? What grain are you feeding? What supplements might you also be adding? Don't forget, supplements like Coke conditioners, they're gonna add calories to the diet. So if you've got a horse on a diet that you want to lose weight and you're feeding him 15 different Coke conditioners, they're primarily fat supplements and that is not going to be beneficial. I also need to know the pounds and ounces, not scoops. You know, in Australia, we literally feed with, they call them ice cream puddles. It's the container that ice cream comes in and everybody uses that as the scoop. In America, the biggest change in feeding horses came when they changed the size of the coffee can. And you can see here, there's a slew of different scoops. So if you tell me, well, I feed one scoop in the morning and one scoop at night, I have no idea what you're talking about. So invest in a cheap scale and weigh your feed. I also need to know whether your horse has any kind of special needs, metabolic syndrome, tying up, um, where we're gonna be focusing on the carbohydrates, or does the horse have HYPP? It's a uh, potassium issue in, in some quarter horses. I wanna know then what's your goal? Do you just wanna know what, you're, what to feed because you feel like you might be adding too much or too little? Or do you, do you want your horse to gain some weight, lose some weight? Is he crazy while you're riding him? So you wanna alter his behavior so he might use different energy sources? So I need to know what your goals are. So let's look at example one. And you're gonna see this graph over and over. We've got about 12 examples here. And so I'll orient you to the graph. On the bottom, we've got digestible energy, crude protein, calcium, phosphorus, copper, zinc, selenium, manganese, iodine, lysine, vitamin A, and vitamin E. These all have set requirements for horses. And our goal with this graph is I've highlighted a big red line that goes across at the 100 mark, the 100%. What we want is we want all of these bars to touch that 100% line. And if they touch that 100% line, what it means is 100% of that nutrient has been met in this diet. So in this diet, we've got a seven-year-old horse. He's 1,000 pounds. He's got a body condition score of six. He's doing light exercise. He has no special needs. The person told me they were feeding local hay. The local hay has 7% crude protein, so it's pretty low. 0.75 megacals per pound of digestible energy. They're feeding 20 pounds a day of it and they don't feed any hay or grain to the horse. What should I feed to make sure he's getting everything he needs? Well, looking at this diet, crude protein is, is sufficient, calcium is sufficient, but nothing else in the diet is being met. So you take a product that he needed more energy in the diet. So I'm thinking uh, three to four pound intake rate so that I can get some extra calories into his diet. Um, and we have this product here that is designed to be fed at about four pounds a day. And you can see what a balanced diet looks like on this graph. So we've got our 20 pounds of local grass hay, and we've got four pounds of our pelleted feed that is designed to be fed, it's concentrated to be fed at three to four pounds a day. Because he's doing light exercise, so he didn't need a boatload of extra calories. And you can see that this diet is now balanced. Prior to that, this diet wasn't balanced. So we take example two. We have the same horse, but we've changed the hay source. Now we can find a better quality hay. He's still the same horse. Now we're using an orchard grass hay. It's 12% crude protein. It's got a higher energy content, 0.9 megacals per pound of digestible energy and 20 pounds per day. And he's not getting any grain. What should he feed? What should they feed? Well, now this diet, the energy is being met in this diet. So that that to me is a cue that I need to find a concentrate that is not high in calories because the energy is already being met in this diet. But I need to find something that has got uh, more concentrated vitamins and minerals. So to me, always that is a balancer product, a balancer pellet. So I put in a generic balancer pellet and you can see we have 
all of the minerals are now met in this diet. Those balancer pellets across the board, doesn't matter the brand, they're typically meant to be fed at a one pound feeding rate. So we feed 20 pounds of our better quality orchard grass hay and a pound of balancer. And now this horse doing light exercise is getting all the vitamins and minerals he needs. Why is it important that he gets all those vitamins and minerals? They're gonna help with immune function, um, coat health, hoof health, muscle function, recovery. They're gonna help in a lot of different ways. Now, we do have some people that aren't feeding a, con a grain concentrate or a bagged concentrate, and they might use a, what we call an unfortified grain, like oats. In this diet, I just wanted to show you that you could use you could use oats with your good quality hay, a pound of oats, and I've got two and a half ounces of a vitamin mineral supplement. Now I've got a star beside that. This is a vitamin and mineral supplement that I designed, so I I am confident of its of its ingredients that are included, um, and of the mineral profile. So I I'm confident using this one. I across the board, they're not all the same though. And at the end, I think I'll, t I'll wrap it all up with how do you decide which feeds, which minerals. I'm showing you a lot of examples, but how do you become an overnight expert? How do you know which one you should choose to balance your horse's diet? Well, let's shift gears and look at a horse that is in early lactation. Now, a mare in early lactation, there really isn't any other horse that has higher nutrient requirements than a horse in a mare in early lactation. I mean, this is the peak of nutrient requirements. So she's 10 years old, she's a thousand pounds, she's got a body condition score of five, she's in early lactation, and we have that same old local grass hay that we're feeding her with 7% crude protein, not much energy, and she's getting 20 pounds a day because that's 2% of her body weight. We would have to feed about 11 pounds of a Marin foal feed to balance this diet to get her enough energy and crude protein. A local grass hay with 7% crude protein is not going to be my ideal starting point for this mare and early lactation. Oops. What have I done here? So, I'm more inclined to bring in some better quality hay. So if we can't change the local grass hay, that's what we've got stockpiled in the barn. Bringing in some alfalfa, which is get, going to bring to the table some really good quality protein and some extra calories. So we split the difference and we have 10 pounds of local grass hay and 10 pounds of alfalfa. And now we have seven and a half pounds of mirror and fall feed. This, is a, this, is to, this to me is a better diet. Again, if we're able to just boost, improve the quality of the base hay and go with that orchard grass hay, 20 pounds of that better quality hay and eight pounds of our Marin fall feed. And again, this is another option. You're getting confused, I know. You're sitting at your computer screen thinking, my God, which one should I choose? It's very confusing. This is a confusing topic. And I, I'm, I'm here to tell you that there are, 10 different ways to feed the same horse. And so it it's very difficult to just say, well, you feed a, a mare in early lactation, this is the only way you feed her. There is one wrong way to feed her, and that is to have none of the, have these bars not meet this 100% line. That is the wrong way to feed her. So she wouldn't be getting all the nutrients she needed in her diet. But there are a lot of right ways to feed her. There are a lot of different options and they're all correct and they're all gonna balance the diet. So there's a lot of different options. So again, at the end, it'll all tie together, um, but just know you need to build a good team. So let's look at an example with a horse that does have some kind of um, underlying condition. So we've got a 13 year old horse, he's a thousand pounds, he should be 900 pounds. He's got a body condition score of eight, so he's fat. He's not doing any exercise. He's getting that local grass hay. What else should he be getting fed? So if I'm gonna balance a diet for a horse that's fat, number one, 
I want to make sure that the digestible energy is slightly less than what is required for a horse that was in a good body condition score. So you can see everything is met, every nutrient in this diet is met except digestible energy. It's at about 75% because I want to put him on a calorie restriction diet. But notice I also brought his hay intake down to 12 pounds. So that's 1.2% of his body weight. And I don't want to keep it here for a long time. But remember, if I have a horse on a weight loss program, I'm going to feed him 1.2% of his body weight. But you're going to have to use slow feeders and grazing muzzles and all kinds of things to try and mimic that grazing behavior. One other thing that we really need to be cognizant of when we're balancing this particular diet is we need to make sure that the sugars and starches are low also in this diet. So our local hay has 7% water soluble carbohydrates, 1% starch, and if you add those together that gives us our, our non-structural carbohydrate value, and so that is 8%. Balancer, our ration balancer, the one that I chose, 7.2% water soluble carbohydrate, 7.2% starch for a total of 14.4% non-structural carbohydrates. Now, any of you that have a horse with metabolic syndrome or any of these metabolic issues, you know, well, I need the ingredients in my diet to be 10% or less. So you would look at this balancer and say, no, I can't feed that. It's 14.4% non-structural carbohydrates. That's too much for my horse. But this is where we have to do a little bit of math in our head real quick and work out how much are we actually feeding because percentages are really pointless unless they're attached to the amount that you're feeding. So the actual amount of non-structural carbohydrates in ounces that you're going to get out of your hay is 15 ounces and the actual amount of non-structural carbs that you're getting out of the balancer is 2.3 ounces because it's got such a low feeding rate. Now let's just say we've got that a horse with laminitis. He's 900 pounds, but he should be 1,000 pounds because he's thin, right? He's not doing any exercise. So what am I going to feed this horse without giving him extra sugars and starches, but to give him extra calories? So we've still got that local grass hay because it was really low in non-structural carbohydrates, and it's the only thing that's available at the barn where I board because um, I know we've got to be realistic here. And now I'm going to add four pounds of our low carb feed, our carb safe type product. And you can see in the diet, the digestible energy is at about 120% of his requirement because I want him to gain some weight. And again, if we look, our non structural carbohydrates are still low in this diet. So let's go to a senior feed because this really leads into where we can see some of our mistakes. So a senior, feet, a senior horse for me is that horse that has really poor dentition and can't chew. So he's 27 years old, he's 1,000 pounds, he's a body condition score of four, I'd like him to gain a little bit of weight, but sometimes at this age, we're really not going to gain a lot of weight, we're just looking at maintenance and quality of life, and quality of life is getting them to eat the food. He's not doing any exercise, but the owner tells me the horse cannot chew long stem hay, so what should they feed? Because they listen to my webinar and they know he needs to get a certain amount of fiber in his diet, so how do they do that? Well, senior feeds are designed to be very high in fiber, they're diluted as far as their vitamin and mineral content and their energy content so that they have a very high feeding rate so that we can get that 2% of body weight of fiber into the horse. So you can look at this diet here, 20 pounds of senior feed, and that's it because he can't chew long stem hay. It's a complete feed, so it's giving the fiber and all the nutrients in one feed, and you can see that the diet is balanced. You see, vitamin E is quite high because the vitamin E requirement set by the NRC is 500 IUs per pound, but we know that vitamin E is really important for a mu muscle function and immune function and also can help with glucose and insulin metabolism. We know these old horses have really poor immune function and poor um, muscle function, so we really bump up the vitamin E in these senior feeds. Okay, so let's look at some of the common, a common mistake. I know we're, we're running over our time a little and I don't want to waste too much time. 
So senior feeds are probably one of the most misused feeds on the market. Senior feeds, as I mentioned, they're designed to be fed as the sole source of the horse's diet. These horses that have poor dentition as complete feeds. Feeding rates are really high and the nutrients aren't very concentrated. So when you go out and feed three pounds of senior feed to your 15 year old trail horse, this is not an ideal scenario. Look at this diet. You're going to be happy because your horse's body weight is going to maintain. Why? Because look, the digestible energy requirements are being met. So his body condition is going to look beautiful. But look at the rest of the nutrients that you're shortchanging him on. Calcium, phosphorus, copper, zinc, selenium, iodine, vitamin A. So we want to make sure that the feeding directions that are written on the backs of your bags are not there as a guide. They are there as a, a pretty strong recommendation because you need to feed at least that minimum amount in order to get all the vitamins and minerals your horse needs. So um, know that feeding a little bit of senior feed is really a waste and you're really going to shortchange your horse. To balance this horse's diet, you'd have to feed 10 pounds of senior feed. Well, if you fed him 10 pounds of senior feed, you'd be nearly at 150% of his energy requirements and he's gonna get fat. So you're not gonna do that, but that's what you would have to feed to give him all the vitamins and minerals. Oh. Um, okay, so let's look at this horse. And my little bullet point on the bottom was supposed to be, um, hidden so that you couldn't see it, but I've given it all away. So we've got a 15 year old horse. He's 900 pounds. He should be a thousand pounds. He's a body condition score of three. He's doing light exercise. The owner wants weight gain. So they used an online balancing program because we've all got more time on our hands at the moment than we know what to do with. So we're all Googling and they came up with this diet. Okay. So they got local grass hay at their barn. And they thought, well, you know, these racehorses, they need a lot of calories. That's a pretty high calorie feed. And I put it in my program here and look, it's, it's about 125% of the energy requirements. So based on that webinar she did, that's gonna help with body weight. It's gonna give me extra calories. Everything else in the diet is balanced. This is pretty good. You know, I'm great. Mm. But the horse has been diagnosed with Cushing's disease, and we know that this horse, veterinarians have recommended that this horse needs a diet that's less than 10% non-structural carbohydrates. This diet is 16% non-structural carbohydrates. So this is a terrible diet for this horse, even though it looks balanced. Okay, so interpretation is required when we balance diets. <laughs> And you're all going to be shocked at this one. So here we've got a 10-year-old horse. This is the last example. Moderate exercise, 1,000 pounds. He's a body condition score of six. We're feeding our local grass hay. We're feeding a little bit of vitamin mineral supplement. But we're also feeding three pounds of feed XXX. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a clue here. So the digestible energy on this feed is two megacals per pound. The crude protein is 30%. The fat's 20%. Vitamin E is 250 IUs per pound. Oh, that's great because we need vitamin E. This horse needs vitamin E. I, 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 I don't I give a lot of pasture, so I know I want vitamin E in the diet. And the calcium and phosphorus are balanced. Look, they're in, the, I, they're in the, the correct ratio. There's more calcium to phosphorus. And if you look at the diet, when we feed three pounds of this feed to the horse, he's getting 100% of everything he needs. This looks perfect. And I, I hope you're all nodding your head in agreement. This looks perfect. And now for the oohs and ahs, it's dog food. That was the guaranteed analysis for dog food. So interpretation is key. Build a team that you can trust and rely on them. I can't give you one webinar and tell you how to balance a horse's diet. You do not have to be an expert at everything, but you do need to build a good team around you and you need to trust your team. I, any of the logos that you saw at the beginning of our slide or at the end of our slide, end of our presentation, I 100% 
trust every one of the reps that work for all of our clients and would recommend them to be part of your team. You're going to have a veterinarian, you're going to have a farrier, you're going to have someone who does t dental work, you're going to have a trainer and these are all part of your team and it's really important that you trust the nutritionist and the feed representatives that you're working with that they are going to recommend the right feeds to you and they're going to help you because this is a really complicated topic and we're not going to become overnight experts. And if you get online, you're just going to get confused. So, you guys have been absolutely fantastic. There's been questions coming in left, right, and center. So, Dr. Duran is earning his money tonight. So, webinar series number four. It's going to be viewer's choice. Now, we're all getting a bit jaded from webinars. So, we're going to give you a week off. I'm going to do it two weeks from today, Wednesday, April 22nd at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I want you to watch the Performance Horse Nutrition Facebook page for a poll of topic choices. So Dr. Duran and Rebecca and myself will come up with four or five topics. You answer the poll, every vote counts, and we will present based on the highest ranking topic. Thank you again for joining our webinar and stay safe.